Hello, my dear friends. In this podcast, we will be discussing multiple topics such as improving English, the challenges that come with it, and also relationships. Before I begin, I have a couple of questions for you. Firstly, what problems or challenges do you face while learning English? Secondly, what is the best advice you have ever received? Please comment in the below. Hey, Alyssa! Do you ever feel nervous while speaking English with someone? Not really, but why do you ask? Well, I'm usually good at speaking English and can even think in English fluently. But sometimes when I have to speak, my mind goes blank and I get scared. I end up feeling like I can't continue speaking. Have you ever experienced something like that? I completely understand if you feel hesitant while speaking in a language that is not your native tongue. It's perfectly normal to feel that way. Just keep in mind that learning a new language takes time, patience and practice. If you're interested, I can share some tips with you that could help you improve your language skills. Sure, should I also learn more vocabulary? Please explain this also. Well. The problem is not with the vocabulary. The problem is with your hesitation. The hesitation that you face when are trying to do something new. Because you're habitual of speaking in your mother tongue. I mean, you are not very used to speaking in English. So hesitation is the issue. It's understandable that speaking in English may feel unfamiliar and uncomfortable. However, it's important to push past this hesitation in order to improve your language skills. Wow, great, thank you. What would be the second tip? Sure, I'm not only providing tips to improve your English, but also highlighting the challenges that you might face during your English learning journey. It's important to be aware of these obstacles in order to overcome them and make progress in your language skills. Of course, it's equally crucial to know the issues to make the learning process smooth. The second problem that people often face while learning English is the fear of making mistakes. This fear can hold you back from practicing and speaking the language, which is essential for improvement. It's important to remember that making mistakes is a natural part of the learning process, and it's okay to not be perfect. The more you practice, the more confident you will become in your skills. It's actually true, because most of the time when I make mistakes, I feel very down and want to quit. There are different problems people might face while making mistakes, and one of them could be the fear of failure. When individuals make mistakes, they might feel like they have failed and become demotivated to try again. This fear of failure can hold them back from achieving their goals and hinder their personal growth. I am eagerly waiting for the tips. How can I speak fluently in a language? Ellen, I'm glad you want to improve your language skills. There's no one secret to becoming fluent, but it's always good to keep practicing. Even for someone like me who speaks multiple languages, I am constantly improving and learning new things. Fluency means being able to have a comfortable conversation with someone without feeling limited by your vocabulary or ability to express yourself as a non-native speaker. So my best tip is to keep practicing and try to have conversations with native speakers as much as possible. Hi Ellen, how are you doing today? Hi, Alyssa. I'm doing well. How about you? I've been thinking a lot about relationships lately. It's interesting how they shape our perspectives on love and life. I totally understand. Relationships, whether romantic or not, can teach us so much about ourselves and others. Exactly. And sometimes, those lessons can be difficult to process but they ultimately help us grow and become better versions of ourselves. Yes, it's all about learning and evolving as individuals. 
and it's comforting to have friends like you to share these experiences with. I feel the same way, Ellen. It's nice to know that we're not alone on this journey. Absolutely. So what's next for you on your relationship journey? Who knows? But I'm excited to find out. And I'm glad to have you by my side through it all. What are the signs that someone deeply loves you? Because I feel like we live in this world where we're always wondering. Do they love me? Or do they like me? So, how do you know when you deeply love someone and when someone deeply loves you? Hey Ellen, I totally get what you mean. It can be tough to tell if someone truly loves you or if they're just interested. Some signs that someone deeply loves you could be when they prioritize your needs and make sacrifices for you without expecting anything in return. You might also feel a strong sense of trust respect and admiration for one another. When it comes to knowing if you deeply love someone, it's all about how you feel. Do you feel happy and fulfilled when you're with them? Do you think about them often and want to spend time with them? These are just a few things to consider. Does that help? Thank you so much for the advice, Alyssa. It definitely helps me understand things a bit better. I agree that understanding my feelings is crucial when it comes to knowing if I deeply love someone. I'll keep those things in mind and reflect on my feelings towards them. Once again, thanks for your help. I have noticed that people tend to fall in love too fast. In my opinion, it's better to go for slow, patient and understanding love, which is what true love requires. As you mentioned, Love is kind, love is patient, and love is understanding. These things take time, and it's important to give yourself that time to truly know if you're in love. Let's talk about old-time love and present love. That's an interesting topic, Ellen. When you say old-time love, what exactly do you mean? Well, I mean the kind of love that our grandparents and great-grandparents had. You know, the kind of love that lasted a lifetime. They didn't have dating apps or social media back then, and yet they were able to find true love and stay committed to each other. I see what you mean. But I think it's important to remember that every generation has its own challenges when it comes to love and relationships. Nowadays, we have more options and opportunities to meet new people. But that also means we have to deal with more distractions and competition. That's true. I guess it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of meeting new people and forget about the importance of building a strong and lasting connection. Absolutely. But I think the key to a successful relationship, regardless of the time period, is communication, trust and mutual respect. As long as we keep those things in mind, we can find love and happiness in any era. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on this topic with me. Hey, what's your name? My name is Alyssa Mia, but you can just call me Alyssa. So how can I assist you today? Hi Alyssa, may I know where you live? Well, I live in a small town called Oakville. It's located in the southern part of the state. Do you work or study? I'm currently a student. I'm pursuing a two-year diploma in computer science. After that, I'm hoping to study abroad, either in the UK or the US. I'm really excited about the opportunities that will come with my education and I can't wait to see where it takes me. What's the best advice have you ever received? That's a great question, Ellen. I would say the best advice I've ever received is to never stop learning and growing as a person. This advice has helped me to constantly push myself out of my comfort zone and seek new opportunities for personal and professional development. 
By taking on new challenges and learning from my mistakes, I've been able to achieve things I never thought possible and become a more well-rounded individual. It's a mindset that has served me well and I try to apply it to every aspect of my life. Who is your favourite teacher? My favourite teacher is Mr Robinson, who teaches my technology class. I really like his teaching style and find his instructions to be the most helpful so far. So, what's your favourite subject? My favourite subject is actually computer science. I find it fascinating to learn about how computers work and how we can use them to solve complex problems. It's a subject that challenges me, but also inspires me to learn more. By the way, what's your favourite subject, Ellen? That's really cool, Alyssa. Computer science sounds like a fascinating field. As for me, my favourite subject has always been biology. There's just something magical about studying living organisms and understanding how they function and interact with each other and their environment. From the tiniest microorganisms to the most complex ecosystems, biology never fails to amaze me. Plus, it's so relevant to our everyday lives, from healthcare to conservation efforts. It's like unravelling the secrets of life itself. Hey, where do people usually learn from teachers? The most common place to learn from teachers is at school, usually in a classroom setting. However, with the rise of technology, it's becoming increasingly popular to learn from teachers online. You can attend virtual classrooms or even watch educational videos on platforms like YouTube. Do you like animals? Oh, absolutely. Animals are awesome, aren't they? They bring so much happiness and excitement to our lives. Whether it's a cute puppy playing around or a beautiful bird soaring in the sky, there's just something so special about them. What about you, Ellen? Do you have a favourite animal? Oh, definitely. I'm a huge animal lover too. There's just something so wonderful about the way they bring joy into our lives. I'd say my favourite animal is probably a dog. They're so loyal and full of unconditional love, don't you think? If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.